Welcome once more to Time to Draw with me, Len Berry. I bet you can guess what I'm going to draw today. I'm going to draw the Swordfish 2. What? Don't you like Cowboy Bebop? Alright. So, for those of you who don't know, Cowboy Bebop is what many people call the gateway drug of anime. And I love anime. <laughs> so, the gateway drug of anime, Cowboy Bebop. Uh, it sometimes gets uh, fun labels like uh, the... The... Uh, how, how's it go? The work that should become a new genre unto itself shall be called Cowboy Bebop. That doesn't tell you much. Well, what I, what I can tell you is it is a fantastic anime. Beautifully animated. Excellent soundtrack. And... If you start watching it to some degree or another, you're going to end up a jazz fan at the end, or by the end. Uh, it's it, it's really hard not to, to start saying, hmm, well, this is some jazz music. And it, uh, it has, you know, original compositions of jazz. Uh, other genres, too. Heavy metal, uh, very strong classical pieces. It, it, it's really intricate, well thought anime. Just really intricate, well thought story, setting, everything. Uh. Let's see, what, what, how can I describe this? Because it, it isn't the smoothest thing to describe, necessarily. Uh, this, this little thing here, this is the Swordfish 2. It is a racing, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a racing spaceship. It's a bit racing. Uh, and this particular one is driven by the main character of the series, Spike Spiegel. He is a cowboy. Uh, it's a futuristic setting. Set in the year uh, 2071, so the cowboy there doesn't necessarily mean the same thing it does to us. Uh, in this setting, cowboys are bounty hunters that travel between the various uh, planets of our solar system in the search for bounties. Uh, now, while that sounds incredibly simple, I assure you it is not. It's fun series. Don't get me wrong. It is exceptionally fun. But the characters have their own stories, you know, to, to go through as well. And that's part of where things get interesting. Uh, Spike is a former syndicate member who was gunned down and left for dead uh, by his best friend, uh, who is the main antagonist of the series. But he's not an antagonist in the traditional sense, because he's not after everybody in the crew. He's just after Spike. Now, he'll go after everyone else, sure. We'll get to everyone else in a moment. Um, but Vicious is the only name given for Spike's former friend and uh, syndicate uh, thug. But Vicious is truly one to live up to his name. He, uh, 
he he can be quite cruel and and impatient. But the reason why he doesn't like Spike is Spike was sleeping with Vicious's girlfriend, and you know they were supposed to be best buds, and Spike did kind of betray him. Now that that makes Spike seem meaner than you might think, but uh, he's a fun guy. And a lot of what I've just said, you, you don't know going in. You really don't. That's all right. It, it, it's, it's not a show that lives or dies on the density of its plot. It's a show that thrives off of the nature of its storytelling. That's what I really enjoy about it. That's what a lot of people really enjoy about it. They may not say that's what they enjoy about it. It's what they enjoy about it. Now, a lot of people, uh, they come to know Cowboy Bebop through, uh, through exposure, usually on something like Cartoon Center, uh, Cartoon Network. Combining these, but yeah, uh, Cartoon Network is notorious for showing Cowboy Bebop. They have been showing, as of this date, they have been showing Cowboy Bebop regularly on Cartoon Network, more or less for the past 15 years. That pause was to let that sink in. Fifteen years they've been showing this show. You know, they think, oh, okay, maybe people are tired of it. They start going to play something else. And then they get crazy amounts of fan mail saying, where's Cowboy Bebop? This is a show that anime fans on Saturday nights love to just turn on and watch. It's fun. And, you know, heaven forbid we have a fun show on the air, right? Alright, so let's uh, say something else about the crew. Now, first, the crew, the, the closest thing there is to a captain is uh, Spike's partner in uh, bounty and hunting bounty heads, Jet Black. Now, Jet is a former cop, and their relationship is pretty much built around the sense of we're buddies, we're, we're, we're partners. You don't talk about my. You don't ask about my past, and I won't ask about yours. Jet's cooking specialty is bell peppers and beef. It's especially uh, powerful cooking since he there is often no beef. Slight joke from the first episode, but also it's a pretty good indicator of how they don't always have money. And adding to their money woes is the fourth member of the crew. Yeah, I know, I skipped the number. Uh, the fourth member of their crew, the third adult, and that's Faye Valentine. Faye is... A special kind of messed up.
here. Uh, on the swordfish, uh, there's this uh, ball. That's what I drew here. I'm going to redraw it down here. There's a ball that controls the uh, cannon that's uh, on the underside of the nose. It's the main. I mean, this is the main the main weapon on the swordfish. I'm not using a ruler here, I know. Uh, I probably should. <laughs> All right. Right. Just trying to get the pieces in place. Important thing to do. The third member, I remember now, the third member of the Bebop crew is one they add on, as as is uh, Faye, I'm the fifth member. There are five. I'll talk about that fifth member too. <laughs> The third member is incredibly important and has virtually no dialogue for a very important reason. Ein is a Welsh corgi. The dog is not just a dog though. He's a data dog. And what that means is he has been augmented to be able to network with machines and understand them well. He doesn't have any ports or anything like that on him, you know, in cyberpunk fashion. He's just intelligent. So if he's given uh, an optical relay or something in which he can interact with a computer, VR headset, he owns that computer. <laughs> this is amusing, um, because I... Jet starts out the first few episodes as you know, decryption master, as Jet is so keen to describe himself, and he is thoroughly uprooted in that role by both Ein, the data dog, and the fifth member of the Bebop crew, Edward Wong Hao Peplu Churvsky the Fourth. There's a name Ed gave to him. And Ed is uh, also known as Radical Edward. Ed is uh, a real mess. A preteen kid, preteen girl, <laughs> Edward, whose real name may or may not be Francois. Like I said, may or may not. <laughs> It's this kind of a joke when once you find that bit out. She is pretty much insane. Well, insane's not fair. She's highly abnormal. And that's that's what she, that's what's lovable about her. She is more prone to bite someone than the dog. <laughs> because there is a point where she bites someone randomly. The dog doesn't bite unless there's a really good reason. And at one point there is a really good reason, but that's a little specific stuff. Um, Cowboy Bebop is presented as though it's it's it's, it's episodic. It's You, know, you you can pick up any episode at any point and usually understand the majority of what's going on. There's not a lot of 
must carry over from one episode to the next, aside from just character interaction. You know, Faye is a compulsive gambler. And a losing gambler. Jet has a few uh, dark secrets from his uh, cop days that are, you know, sometimes come back up to bite everybody. And Spike, of course, has his entanglements with the Syndicate. So, you put all those things together, and you think, oh, well, that's probably some intense crime show. And it can be. More often than not, it's a fun-loving, semi-realistic um, exploration of near-future interplanetary life. You know, the farthest out anybody goes is, uh, I think one of Pluto's moons. I mean, there's a penal colony on it. It's a penal colony, whatever the furthest thing out is. Most of the places are locations in our own solar system that are potentially habitable. Uh, Mars is actually the most uh, the, the most frequented location because that's where the bulk of uh, humanity lives. There are no aliens in this show. Uh, It's it, something happens. They try to make uh, jump gates for the first time, and it destroys a big chunk of the moon. Doesn't completely destroy it. This is not a Neil Stevenson book. Uh, it it destroys a chunk of the moon, which means the Earth is constantly being pelted with uh, asteroids. Yeah. Typical, you know, moon-based asteroids. If anyone out there knows the exact term, feel free to post it in the comments below. <laughs> but the debris of the moon makes life on Earth a bit more dangerous. You know, the maps are constantly changing. You could get pelted with rocks from above. Also, uh, Venus is a uh, Big role. A lot of action happens in Venus in one episode, which is a really good episode. I forget which episode number. I want to say seven. Uh, yeah, that, that one was pretty good. Um, decent amount of action on Ganymede. Sometimes places just between between ports. They have a couple of episodes that take place on Earth. Um, Three or four are Earth. But, you know, it's, it's an interesting show. Um, it's, it's lovable and entertaining. And most people who watch it, not everyone, but mo I've heard a few who didn't, but most people who watch it, they, they give it a shot. They say, I don't like anime. Well, that's alright. Give this show a shot. It's 
not your typical anime. It's not. They watch it and suddenly, oh wow, what's this? <laughs> And that that's that's what happens to a lot of people when they watch Cowboy Bebop. They they start saying, you know, there's something to this show. I kind of like it. There's a lot else out there is there like this. Well, it's it's kind of tough at that point. Alright, that. Another thing that, uh, along with the jazz music, that you'll get interested in should you decide to watch some Cowboy Bebop is you start wondering about a little thing called Jeet Kune Do. The martial arts system uh, developed by Bruce Lee. Spike is a major practitioner of Jeet Kune Do. The episode that takes place on Venus, in fact, uh, has him taking on a student, which is all manner of entertaining. Little notion of be like water, but Spike's ability to move the way he does, and he's he's fast and agile. It's it's rooted in the ideals of Jeet Kune Do, but he's also he also has it also speaks to his character because he's he's always moving from one place to another. Or you could say he's moving to evade, trying to maybe avoid his life, the life he had before meeting up with Jet, the life of a syndicate agent. There's a, uh, a very interesting line in the In the lyrics of the the closing song, the end credits song, uh, which is called the UFO Blues, uh, and the, the real folk blues is especially combined with the images in the end credits. They, they're the back, they're, they're the backstory of Spike. Yeah, Spike and his interaction with uh, with Vicious and Vicious's girlfriend Julia, who. Spike is trying to find once more. But the line that's interesting, uh, because Spike has one artificial eye due to the injuries he received uh, in his final pre show duel with uh, Vicious, he lost an eye, so he's an artificial one. It doesn't look artificial, but he points out the difference. Uh, which is slight, but the line from the song is Kitotsu no mede asu wo mite Kitotsu no mede kino o mitsu meteru and 
in short, what that means is roughly is I see with one eye into the future. I see with one eye into the past. And when he shows the how to tell which eye is artificial, he he talks about how he's stuck in the past. So as fun loving and aloof as, as he can be, he's he's kind of trapped. Which is fascinating. And it's not that he has a superpower or recollection or anything like that. Uh, he's referring more to the fact that he gets up every day. There's a part of him that is stuck in the past. I just will not let him go. It's one of the central themes, too, uh, with the show, is how much will your past control you? Spike has his demons. Jet has his demons. Faye has her demons. Uh, everyone has chunks of the past that keep clawing back at them. And one thing that the show forces them to do is to confront their past. In whatever method, you know, comes up, sometimes it's just to confront a former girlfriend's current boyfriend. Sometimes it's to recall the origins of unpaid debts but it is ultimately its core show that is about figuring out the past and surviving it Which is a little ironic with that theme, given that the jazz influence is so powerful. Like I said, if you watch Cowboy Bebop for very long, you're going to start going, well, this is some jazz music. Part of the reason why Spike ends up with the swordfish too 
is his appreciation of the past. It's not that he's oh, only the past, only old stuff is good. It's not that kind of thing. It's it's more a case of the previous owner of the ship knows that he'll he'll take care of it. He understands that just because it's old doesn't mean that it's useless. That just because it's old doesn't mean it's not strong. And just because it's not the latest model doesn't mean it's not perfectly capable about doing everything. What do we think? Let's go ahead and put another rocket back here. There's that. Six percent. Well, this is interesting compared to a lot of the other videos that I've done and that before I started you saw my reference <laughs> uh, sorry I just had it fun you saw the reference piece that I was using and that's kind of neat just, just doing things differently See. Um.
I got a little heavy with the non-photo glue, but it's all right. I'm not going to completely color it in. I'm just going to put in some emphasis shading. Two. Uh, let's give it a little contrast area. I feel like this is. I do this with a lot of drawings, especially if I'm drawing people. Just a little bit of contrast area is better than nothing. Okay, um, I'm satisfied. For once, when I'm saying that, I, I'm actually satisfied. So, yeah, there we are, the swordfish. Well, what do you think? There's that. I know, about down here, I had a wing bit, bits pop off. Uh, yeah. Anyway, there's there's my swordfish model. The the gun is supposed to turn. There are points of the, there's a point early episode where you do see it tilt. Uh, yeah. yeah, fun times. Anyway, uh, that's uh, a little taste of my love of uh, Cowboy Bebop and the Swordfish Two is a fantastic looking ship. I don't draw ships that very often. Uh, let me know how I did. Uh, it's like I said, it's it's not something I often do. So, you know, let fill me in on on that sort of thing. I'm trying to get this the proper color, or at least a little bit closer to it. <laughs> All right, now we're done. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, let me, let me know how I did on this. Let me know what you like about Cowboy Bebop. Uh, if you have any questions about how I got into it, we'll talk about anime. <laughs> Anything you want to know, just hit the comments below. Feel free to like and subscribe. Share with your friends. Talk about Cowboy Bebop amongst yourselves. Let the love of anime, animation of all forms, especially 2D, grow. Because that's a separate rant for another day. <laughs> um, but this is Lynn Barry, and this has been Time to Draw. Have a spectacular day, night, or anything in between.